الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله is greater الله is the greatest is the greatest الله is greater than this gathering الله is greater than this park Allah is greater than this city. Allah is greater than this state. Allah is greater than this country. Allah is greater than this hemisphere. Allah is greater than this world. Allah is greater than the sky above us. Allah is greater than the stars beyond the sky. Allah is greater than any galaxy beyond the stars. Allah is greater than the universe that holds it all. Allah is greater than all of creation. Allah is greater than all of creation. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Wa lillahi alham. Allah is greater than you and Allah is greater than I. Allah is greater than our problems. Allah is greater than our grief. Allah is greater than our anxiety. Allah is greater than our worries. Someone said, don't tell Allah you have problems. Tell your problems you have Allah. We say no, we tell, we tell Allah we have problems because Allah is the reliever of all problems. But we also tell our problems we have Allah. And we acknowledge that Allah is greater than our problems. Whatever is vexing us, whatever is grieving us, whatever we might be struggling with. We might be struggling with the hardship and the burden of trying to raise our children in this troubled and confused world. Allah is greater than that struggle. We might be struggling with, with scarce and disappearing employment opportunities in the face of both automation and discrimination. Allah is greater than that struggle. We might be struggling with some form of addiction. May Allah give us faith that is stronger than any addiction, but it is what it is and reality is reality. Allah is greater than that struggle. But for us to realize the greatest greatness of Allah in our lives, we have to open our hearts to be receptive to His greatness. We have to open our souls to be receptive to our greatness. We have to open, we have to allow our hearts and our souls to become mirrors that reflect the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives. And when we do that, we will, live, we will realize just how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Wa lillahi alhamd. Alhamdulillah. Brothers and sisters, one of the greatest things we can do to invite the greatness of Allah into our lives is to praise Allah and thank Allah for the blessings He's bestowed upon us. Because when we thank Allah for the greatness of the blessings, we realize how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Imam Ali radiallahu anhu, karram Allahu wajha, is related to have said, عَظَمَ الْخَالِقُ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ that they magnify the greatness of the Creator in their souls and everything other than Him became small before in their sight. They magnified the greatness of the Creator in their souls. And everything other than him became small in their sight. Brothers and sisters, magnify Allah 
in your soul. Magnify the greatness of Allah in your soul. Extol the greatness of Allah on your tongue and your problems, your worry, your grief, your struggles. Everything you might encounter in this life will be small in your sight. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alham. Don't be an ingrate. The greatest kufr is the rejection of the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And faith is a great gift of Allah. Kufr is but a rejection of the gift of faith. But we should realize kufr is the rejection of any of Allah's blessings. When Allah Ta'ala says to all of us in the book, in His book, in the Quran, فَذْكُرُونِ أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Remember me, I will remember you. And that's a rhetorical statement from Allah because Allah never forgets. It's a reminder and an emphasis for us to remember Him. وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Give thanks to my blessings and do not be an ingrate. Allah is talking about rejecting His blessings. When Allah Ta'ala says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ عَفْوًا وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ If you, when your Lord proclaimed, if you give thanks for my blessings, I will increase you in those blessings. And if you reject my blessings, if you are an ingrate, you should know that my punishment is severe. وَلَئِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ Allah Ta'ala has blessed us. He has blessed us coming and going. He has blessed us by night and by day. He has blessed us with food. He has blessed us with shelter. He has blessed us with clothing. He has blessed us with moderate temperate weather. He has blessed us with water to drink. He has blessed us with clothing to put upon our back. He's blessed us with faith. He's blessed us to, and inspired us to come here this morning when we could be doing so many other things. These are blessings we should thank Allah for. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alham. Ibrahim alayhi salam, whose life, many critical events in his life, the pilgrims are reenacting and commemorating. Ibrahim alayhi salam is described in the Quran amongst other things in the following way. إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ كَانَ أُمَّةً قَانِتًا لِلَّهِ حَنِيثًا وَلَمْ يَقُوا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ شَاكِرًا لِأَنْعُمِهِ اجْتَبَاهُ وَهَدَاهُ إِلَى سِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Amongst other he, things, Ibrahim was thankful for the blessings of Allah. شَاكِرًا لِأَنْعُمِهِ He was thankful for his blessings, the blessings of Allah which were bestowed upon him. He was thankful and we should be thankful. But he's also described as an ummah. Inna Ibrahim kana ummah. And we want to focus on this in the balance of the first part of this khutbah. Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanita lillah. Three things are, are mentioned by most of the exegetes. Others, but three things they focus on in terms of Ibrahim being an ummah. First of all, he was a leader, he was an imam. Ummah is from the same root as imam. Ummah, alif mim mim. Ummah, alif mim mim. An imam, imam, alif mim mim. So Ibrahim being an ummah, he was a leader, he was an imam. And each and every one of us should be a leader. 
We should not, we are, we are not given this deem to be followers of those who do not have faith. We were not given this deem, this way of life to be followers of those who do not have guidance. We were not given this deem, this religion to be followers of those who don't have good sense. We were given this religion to be leaders. And if there were ever a time when people were in need of the guidance and leadership that Muslims can provide, the time is now. The time is now, brothers and sisters, when people are confused as to their very self. People don't even know who they are or what they are. They're describing themselves in unseemly ways. They're inventing new words to describe themselves. Words that human language has no precedent to present. They're making it up on the fly. They're pulling many Muslims to a vast, into a vast social experiment, the outcomes of which they have no clue, absolutely no clue as to where it leads. And many Muslims, as opposed to leading them, as opposed to saying to them, as Allah says in Quran, when they said Bakuru can unfat, that the male is in no wise like the female. Instead of leading them to human dignity, telling them the ways in which Allah has ennobled the human being. They join their confusion. Brothers and sisters, the world is in need of you. The world is in need of us. Our country is in need of us. And we must rise to the challenge. Rely on the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will find strength you never realized you had. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alhamd. You will find strength you never realized you had because that strength will not emanate from you. You and I are weak in and of ourselves. The human was created weak, but we are strong through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are strong with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are strong relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are strong clinging to the rope that Allah ta'ala extends to us. Please seek your strength in Allah, brothers and sisters. Seek your strength in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And don't be, be, don't be deceived into believing you can rely on yourself. This is the great lie of liberalism. That all the human being needs is his or her individual self. They can rely on themselves. They can define themselves. They can be whatever the whims come, whatever the whims tell them to, they can be. Ibrahim alayhi salam told us, Abraham told us we are Muslims. Abraham told us we are Muslims. وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِ هُوَ اجْتَبَاكُمْ وَمَا جَعْلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجْ مِلَّةَ أَبِيكُمْ إِبْرَاهِيمِ هُوَ سَمَّاكُمُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ He has called you and designated you as Muslims. We are Muslims, and a Muslim is a human being who realizes his or her weakness in and of himself. We're not deceived by that, but realize we can be strong through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can be strong through Allah. Brothers and sisters, have the courage. Ibrahim was courageous. He smashed the idols. He had the courage to smash the idols. Do we have the courage to smash the idols that people are worshiping? Idols that are leading people astray. Idols that are tearing people's lives apart. Idols that are demanding a worship that destroys lives and empty souls. Do we have that courage? We can find that courage through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
just as Ibrahim, Abraham found that courage. He was a leader. And, and, and Ummah, as Ibn Mas'ud and others say, one who teaches good to the people. So we should be leaders, not followers. We're not sheep being uh, led by a shepherd of destruction to our doom. We are leaders who should be leading people who think they're sheep and to show them they're not sheep, but they're human beings, dignified, upright, noble human beings. And an ummah is one who teaches good to the people. We cannot stand idly by while people teach evil to the people. They fill their mouths with profanity. Words that many of us who are old enough, if we spoke those words in our youth, we'd be admonished severely. Our mouths would be washed out with soap. But we've allowed people to use that dehumanizing language as if it's as if it's commonplace, as if there are no spiritual consequences. We could not even say, God darn it. Some of you are old enough to remember. What would our parents say to us? Boy, I don't want to hear you using the Lord's name in vain. We were taught to reverence the name of God. We were Muslims at that point, so we say God. But those Christian parents, they taught us to reverence the name of God and not to use God's name in vain. And we would be admonished, we would be, even be physically punished for using the Lord's name in vain. Now people use the name of God and with impunity. And they're taught to belittle God. When the Muslim, the believers, taught to extol God, this is the day of takbirat, not just for the prayer from as we walk through the marketplace and our comings and goings, as we drive in our cars, as we go to visit our friends, as we go to eat and share food and break bread with our beloveds. Our tongue should be extolling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout this period until Asr of Wednesday. Allahu Akbar Allah of Maghrib of Wednesday. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illallah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Wa lillahi alham Brothers and sisters, we have to get back to some of that old time religion. We have to teach people Young brother, don't talk like that. Don't use that language. Young sister, don't dress like that. Don't act like that. A lot of the sisters are old enough to remember a time when their mothers or grandmothers said to them, that's not ladylike. Now, if we said that to a young lady, that's not ladylike, she'd be insulted. You sexist pig, don't talk to me like that. No, we have to teach what we were taught. Because what we were taught was a remnant of prophetic teachings and guidance that sufficed us. We have to get back to that and not be afraid. Ibrahim was not afraid. He taught monotheism, he taught Tawheed, and he taught prophetically informed character, etiquette, adab, akhlaq, in a world of shirk. He was alone, but he wasn't afraid to be alone. We have each other. We have millions of Muslims in this country. And we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to teach people good. And finally, he said an ummah is a qudwa. It's a moral exemplar. Someone who is not afraid to challenge themselves, to be better than what our world, our society, our, soci our, our culture has made us a qudwa, a moral exemplar for people. None of us are perfect, but we should strive for perfection. We should have the courage, the wherefore within ourselves to strive for perfection. 
and we shouldn't be afraid of it. We should be like that long that that young Arab said one time. Laysal Fata Man Kala Kan Abi Wala Kinna Fata Man Kala Ha and a da that a courageous young person isn't one who says my forefathers and my ancestors were this or that. I don't want to hear anyone talking about what the Muslims used to be and what the Muslims used to do. This is our time. What are we doing and who are we? We should look at them for inspiration and motivation. But if we're not doing anything, if we're not standing for anything, if we're not representing anything, then we shouldn't talk about what they did and what they stood for and what they represented. If that can't inspire us, this is a nation that has passed away. And this is interpreting the verse figuratively. Because literally it's talking about the previous ummas. But we're talking about the previous generations. This is a, a nation. They are gone. They're not walking on this earth any longer physically. There are influences here. The spiritual energy they generated while they were in the world is here. But they're physically gone. They will have what they earned. Our great Muslim ancestors who preceded us, who built the empires, who built the architectural wonders that we point to, who established the intellectual greatness that we read about. They're gone. And they will be rewarded for the great things that they did. And you will have and be rewarded for what you did. We will be rewarded for what we did. Brothers and sisters, make up your mind to try to the best of your ability to do something great, meaningful and significant in this world. Nothing can stop you if you rely on Allah. Nothing can stop you if you rely on the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make up your mind, you're not going to be a follower. Make up your mind, you're not going to be petty. Make up your mind, you're not going to be insignificant. Make up your mind that you're not going to be someone who people point to and say, yeah, those Muslims, they talk about this and that, but look at them. No, make up your mind. Like that young person, ha and a da, here I am. I'm not perfect, but I'm doing my best to stand for something. I'm doing my best to be somebody. I'm doing my best to make a positive contribution to this world as long as Allah Ta'ala keeps me in this world. And relying on Allah, anything in human terms is possible. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. Wa qulu khawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wa li sa'ir al-mu'minin ya qawm astaghfirullah. الحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Allah Akbar, 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 Allah
Allah Ta'ala has blessed us. These days are days of festivities, but they're days to remember Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu described this day of Eid and the three days of Tashriq. فَقَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ هِيَ أَيَّامُ أَكْلٍ وَشُرْبٍ وَذِكْرِ اللَّهِ That there are days of eating and drinking and remember Allah, remembering Allah. So brothers and sisters, eat and drink and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Visit your friends, your neighbors, your relatives, make amends with people you might have had fallings out with. This is the time. And ask Allah to forgive your sins on this day. This is a day when people are liberated from the hellfire. The, and the previous day, these are days of liberation from the hellfire. And as we eat and we drink and we remember, we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let us remember all of our brothers and sisters who don't enjoy the blessing that we enjoy in this world. And never forget, someone might say, you said, وَلَئِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ I thank the law and thank the law and I don't see any increase. The increase might not necessarily be in this world, but the increase will come. When you do good in your relationship with Allah and you do good in your relationship with your family members and you do, do good in your relationship with your neighbors and you do good in your relationship with your fellow citizens, then you're a muhsin. And Allah loves the muhsineen. Inna Allah yuhibbu al-muhsineen. Allah loved, loves those who do good in all of their relationships. But the increase for the muhsin, literally the greatest increase and one we should all hope for. And just as we said Allah is greater than this world, the increase, the greatest increase the world could not contain if the world were to witness one instance of that increase manifested. This whole world would be rendered, would, would be split asunder. The heavens and earth and everything in it would be obliterated. And so that increase has been, been reserved for us in paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَى وَزِيَادًا those who do good in all of their relationships, starting with their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will have good and they will have an increase. Husna, al husna wa ziyada. What is the ziyada? Wujuhu yawma idin nadira ila rabbiha nadira. On the day of the increase, those faces will be radiant, gazing upon their Lord, however that will be. The increase is the beatific vision, the increase is the ru'ya. And this is the great Eid. The believers have the weekly Eid, the Jum'ah. And we have two annual Eids, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. And then we have the greatest Eid of all, and that's the Eid in Jannah. And the Eid in Jannah will be the day that we are blessed with the Ru'ya, with the beatific vision. That will be the Eid in Paradise. And that's greater than anything this world could ever give us. And that, وَلَا that is the great increase for those who do good and for those who are thankful. The shakirin, that is their greatest benefit. So if you don't see it in this world, be assured that you will see it in the next. And when that occurs, the mere jannah will make you forget this world and the rupya will make you forget everything else, every delight and pleasure in jannah. And that is the greatest Eid. But we have this Eid, so enjoy this Eid and enjoy your family and enjoy the blessings and bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and extol the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you go through these days. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alhamd, 
اللهم اوفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا احب لنا من لدنك رحمة انك انت الوهاب ربنا افرج علينا الصبرا وثبت اقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا افرج علينا الصبرا وثبت اقدامنا وتوثنا مسلمين وعفو عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم انا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين ما عصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماءنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما حيتنا واجعله, لو... واجعله للوارث منا واجعله اجعل ثأرا على من ظالمنا وانصرنا على من عدانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين واعفو عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا للقوم الكافرين Ya Allah, we ask you in this place, this blessed place, we ask you amongst this blessed gathering, we ask you on this blessed day, on this blessed occasion, that you forgive everybody here and those beyond the confines of this gathering. Ya Allah, we ask that you erase our the sins from us and that we emerge, we emerge and leave this musalla cleansed like the day our mothers first gave birth to us cleansed as a white garment is cleansed by all stain and impurity, cleansed as the earth is cleansed by rain and sleet and snow and hell. Ya Allah, we ask that you accept our worship, that we, you accept all of the worship that the hujjaj, the pilgrims have sent forth during their struggles to get to the sacred precincts and to worship you and to reenact the, the rites and to and engage in the acts and rites of worship during the, in the, there in the pre sacred precincts that you, have, you accept from that multitude, Ya Allah. You accept from that multitude and you accept from everyone not in the sacred precincts who have left their homes and dropped what they were doing to come out to the musallas all over this land and all over this earth to worship you, Ya Allah, to seek your forgiveness, Ya Allah, to reenact and to enact the sunnah, uh, the way and the tradition of your messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, accept that from us, all of us. Ya Allah, we pray that if those amongst us who might be struggling with whatever they be struggling in, with, may it be either may it be personal, may it be related to their marriages, may it be related to their friendships, may it be related to issues with their neighbors, may it be related to their work, may it be related to their struggle to, to identify exactly who they are. Whatever it might be, Ya Allah, we ask that you guide them, that you lift any affliction from them, that you lift any hardship or burden from them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we pray that you make things easy for our mothers, especially the single mothers who are struggling with might and main to raise their children by themselves, oftentimes juggling between the duties of the house and the duty of a job they might have to out of necessity maintain outside of the house. Ya Allah, we pray that you bless all of them, Ya Allah, that you strengthen all of them, Ya Allah, that you bless them to realize that every hardship, difficult and struggle, if they undertake it with a good intention, with a good niya, that is worship of you, Ya Allah, that's elevating their rank, Ya Allah, that's elevating their station, Ya Allah, that is driving away their sins, Ya Allah, we pray that all of our menfolk, Ya Allah, who might be struggling to find adequate, sufficient work, who might be struggling in this dehumanizing environment to affirm their masculinity and to affirm their leadership in their home, to affirm and to assume the role that Allah has placed upon them when He declared 
الرجال قوامون على النساء. The men are the protectors and maintainers of women. That you strengthen them, Ya Allah. You bless them with the wherewithal to take care of their families with dignity and honor, Ya Allah. You bless them with the compassion in their hearts to go through the world like Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the exemplary man who had the courage, the most courageous of people on the day of Hunayn, when the arrows of Bani Hawazin were showering down upon the Muslims and people were fleeing to and fro, that every man in this gathering has the courage of Muhammad who is going forth through the hell of arrows with his, with his camel, with his mule and declaring, and in Nabi Kadib, and Abdul Abdul Muttalib, I'm a prophet and that's no lie. I'm the son of Abdul Muttalib. I'm the son of Abdul Muttalib. And a Nabi Yulla Kadib, and Abdul Abdul Muttalib, and a Nabi Yulla Kadib, and Abdul Abdul Muttalib. That we have the prophetic courage to our extent as non prophets to say that I am a believer and that's no lie. I'm a follower, a follower of the son of Abdul Muttalib. I'm a believer and that's no lie. I'm a follower of Ibn Abdul Muttalib. I'm a believer and that's no lie. I'm a follower of Ibn Abdul Muttalib. May we leave this Musalla, Ya Allah, with that firmness and that strength and that conviction in our heart that we are believers and that's no lie. And we're not faking it, that we're the followers of Ibn Abdul Muttalib. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Ya Allah, relieve all of our brothers and sisters who don't enjoy this freedom that we enjoy, who don't enjoy, enjoy the ability to gather as we've gathered, who don't enjoy the safety and security that we enjoy. Ya Allah, relieve and protect our brothers and sisters in Kashmir and our brothers and sisters in Myanmar, both those, both those who have returned to their homes and those who are still in refugee camps in Burma and in, in, in Bangladesh or elsewhere, that you protect all of our brothers and sisters. Ya Allah, we, have, we pray that you hold the hands of those who have launched this ummah into wars against each other, destroying each other, destroying our resources, depleting our resources, destroying innocent lives, destroying homes, as we see in Yemen or Somalia, or have we seen in Iraq and Afghanistan and elsewhere, that you refrain the believers from unleashing anger against each other, that you replace that anger with love, Ya Allah, that you replace that anger with love, Ya Allah. We pray that you bless and relieve and protect our brothers and sisters in Idlib, in Syria, Ya Allah. Those who have been promised refuge, who've been promised sanctuary, who've been promised safety. And now that promise of refuge and sanctuary is being violated in the most brutal ways. Ya Allah, protect them and seize the hands of those who have unleashed violence against them. That you protect our brothers and sisters in Philistine, Ya Allah who has the world's attention has been diverted to those other places that we've been mentioning, are exposed to the systematic usurpation of their land, the continuing unmitigated destruction and bulldozing and explosion of their homes. Protect them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, return them to their, ya, their land, Ya Allah. Bless their lands to be lands of safety, security, and peace, Ya Allah that you protect all of the Muslims in places like Libya or places or elsewhere, that you protect our brothers and sisters in West Africa, Ya Allah, in lands like Senegal or Gambia, where the, the leadership has been able to maintain safety and security for the people. Ya Allah, extend that safety and security for them and expand it to the neighboring lands. Bless the Muslims in Sierra Leone, Ya Allah. Bless them that never experienced the kind of hardship and affliction that they went in through a few decades ago, Ya Allah. Bless them that never have to have their hands chopped off to ensure that they will never vote again, 
Ya Allah, bless them to never go through that hardship. Bless our brothers and sisters in Nigeria, Ya Allah. Bless the leadership with wisdom. Bless those who have gone out against the Muslims, claiming they're Muslims, yet declaring war almost exclusively on the Muslim community, such as Boko Haram. Bless them to understand this religion, to give them the good of understanding. Man yuridi lahu bihi khayran yufakiru fin deen. The one Allah wants good for, he gives them a good, sound understanding of the religion. Bless them to understand this religion, Ya Allah. Bless them to understand the sanctity of the lives of innocent people and of the sanctity of the lives of a believer. Bless them with that understanding, Ya Allah, to pull back their hands from the destruction of their very land and bless their hands to build their land, to use the wealth of their great country of Nigeria, their great, great wealth, to build a society that will be a, a real life Wakanda and not some Hollywood version. To use that wealth to build a real, strong, viable, exemplary nation, Ya Allah. Bless all the people throughout Africa and all the people throughout Europe and all the people throughout the Americas. Bless those people who in the face of violence and femicide have to leave their lands and seek to migrate northwards Bless them with safety and security in their own land. And if they attain to our border, bless our leadership with the humanity and with the compassion to treat them with dignity and respect, to keep mothers united with their children, to make it easy for people if they to seek asylum and to eliminate our policies that may be contributing to the hardship in their lands, Ya Allah. Bless us to be people of compassion. Bless us to be people of mercy. Bless us to be people of strength where strength is required to protect the weak, to guard the innocent, to preserve the lives of those whose lives might have been desanctified by the criminals who far too often raise their ugly heads amongst the innocent communities of humanity. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, we ask you in this time, this place, we ask you amongst this blessed gathering, we ask you through the greatness, your greatness, that we extol to your incomparable, immeasurable, incomprehensible greatness, Ya Allah, we ask you, Ameen, 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 Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar, Wa lillahi alham. In Mubarak Kulam, wa antum ya khair, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad, wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.